So just so we can start sort of close to time here, as uh, we only have an hour, um, I'll just get started with, um, first we have an uh, Arctic lands acknowledgement. So this is adapted from the IASC State of the Arctic report, um, and they give us permission to use it in our webinar today. The circumpolar Arctic is the contemporary home to many different indigenous peoples. Wherever you may be participating in this webinar, we honor and recognize the place-based knowledge of Arctic indigenous peoples and their ancestral and contemporary stewardship of their homelands. And we welcome you to do the same. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Lindsay Arthur and I'm from the Icelandic Ministry of Education, Science and Culture. This is the final webinar in our ASM3 webinar series. And I'm just gonna quickly review our housekeeping for this, um, which is the same for all the webinars in our series. So this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted um, to the European Polar Board YouTube page and shared on the ASM3 website. Uh, the microphones and cameras of the audience are automatically turned off. If you're having any trouble, you can use the chat box and ask for assistance. Um, and you can also see the Zoom website support page. So the full program for today is available on the ASN3 website, um, and that link will be posted in the chat. Any questions that you have during the webinar, we do have a Q&A at the end. Um, please use the Q&A box for those questions, and we'll do our best to address what questions we can um, at the end, or we could type some answers just as we go along. For this webinar, IASC has also kindly let us um, use their code of conduct, which they developed for ASSW. So the link to this will be posted in the chat. Um, and what's most important is that we just create a respectful atmosphere and we listen and ask questions with an open mind. So abuse or harassment of any kind will not be tolerated. So with that, I would like to introduce our first um, speaker, Hiroyuki Enomoto from the National Institute of Polar Research and also a member of our ASM3 Science Advisory Board. Hey, thank, you. thank you, Rinzei. I'm Hiroyuki Enomoto from National Institute of Polar Research in Japan. And I'm a co-chair of the ASM3 Science Advisory Board. We want to welcome you to the final ASM3 webinar. The third Arctic Science Minister was held uh, was successfully held in Tokyo on May 8th and 9th in a hybrid format that combined remote and on-site participants. Uh, thanks to the extraordinary effort of the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Science, Sp uh, Sports Science and Technology, and the Ice Icelandic Ministry of Education, Science and Culture. Many countries and uh, organizations cooperated to make ASM3 possible in these extraordinary times. ASM3 with the theme of the knowledge for sustainable Arctic is a place for us to unite and face the urgent uh, challenges posed by the rapid change in the, in the Arctic. This is a bridge between science and policy. ASM, ASM3 allowed us to gather a great deal of up-to-date information on Arctic research, review outcomes from the past ASM3, ASMs, and share the scientific activities we have achieved through the science process. The detail will be introduced later in the presentation, but we received the submission of 434 projects on Arctic research and education. We would like to take this opportunity to, to thank the organizations of ASM1 and ASM2 for their guidance as we took over the uh, continuation of this important international process. ASM3 was postponed for half a year uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic. But in the end, there were many benefits to this delay. The webinar series hosted by the European Polar Board is one of them and allowed us to open the ASM3 science process to the wider Arctic research community and stakeholders. Our 
first webinar was held in last October last year and covers the uh, history of the Arctic Science Ministerial meetings and introduce our ASM3 process. Then we try to identify gaps and barriers in our uh, November online workshop. In December, we were honored to have our indigenous partners design, who designed and this uh, webinar, sharing many perspectives on the importance of the indigenous knowledge in Arctic research. Then, starting in January uh, 2021, this year, we followed with webinars that uh, discuss the four sub themes of ASM3 observe, understand, respond, and strengthen. And today, we have our final webinar summarizing the ASM3 process. The series was de developed to increase the transparency of the ASM3 process and provide additional opportunity for people to engage with and contribute to the ASM3 out outcomes. We would, we would also like to thank you, the webinar participants, for, uh, for keeping your interest in the ASM3 throughout the process by your engagement in this new shared future of the Arctic, future of the Arctic Science Minister. Thank you very much. That's all. Thanks so much, Anamoto. Um, next up, just a brief look at our agenda. And again, you can also find this on the ASM3 website. Um, and the link should also be in the chat. Um, so next we have Embla Air Oztotar, who's the director of the Icelandic Arctic Cooperation Network, and also from our ASM3 Science Advisory Board. And she's gonna give a look at kind of the ASM3 science process. Thank you, Lindsay. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, if you could go to my first slide, please. As hosts of ASM3, Iceland and Japan arrived at the overarching theme, knowledge for a sustainable Arctic, and developed four sub-themes under the titles observe, understand, respond, and strengthen. These reflect elements of the previous ASM themes and reintroduce an emphasis on education, which appeared in ASM 1. These themes should be viewed as a four-step iterative cycle with each theme informing the next without hierarchy. Next, please. The Science Advisory Board was brought together under the guiding principles for ASM 3 to be transparent, inclusive, and implement a bottom-up approach to science. Therefore, 12 representatives were nominated to serve on the board from different international Arctic science organizations to help guide the science process for ASM3. Next, please. The ASM science process followed the structure of ASM2 by soliciting projects, updates, and new projects from participating countries, indigenous people's organizations, and international organizations, while also attempting to create a more formal consultation process with the wider research community. Notably for this ASM, the working groups of the Arctic Council were invited to contribute projects through the science process as other international organizations. Next, please. A consultation process with the wider research community also took place through the sixth International Symposium on Arctic Research, or ISAR-6, the ASM-3 Research Community Workshops, which was a joint effort between IASC, IASA, and APEX, and the Arctic Observing Summit, who submitted a direct call to action to the ASM-3 ministers. The outcomes of these consultation processes can all be found in the ASM3 report. Next, please. All countries and organizations 
were given new templates to submit their project information. Projects were then reviewed by the Science Advisory Board members who highlighted some key projects under each theme and noted progress made since ASM2. The ASM3 Science Summary found in the ASM3 report includes the synthesized information from this process. Next, please. New to this ASM was a survey on international collaboration and cooperation, which was sent to all participating countries and organizations. The aim of this survey was to collect some much needed information and feedback to help identify gaps and barriers in Arctic research, which was also spe addressed specifically in the gaps and barriers workshop as part of the ASM3 webinar series. Next, please. All 434 of these formal project submissions by countries and organizations were reviewed, discussed, and synthesized by the Science Advisory Board. Next, please. These statistics can be found in the report with a further breakdown of new projects and project updates by country and organizations. Next, please. This gives us a look at the collaboration by country, as well as a breakdown of the projects submitted by theme. Many of the key projects which best exemplified international cooperation were highlighted in the ASM3 webinar series. The intention of this wide reaching science process was to have a robust and inclusive science process to provide a strong foundation for all the final outcomes of the ASM3. Hopefully, these final outcomes create useful tools for cooperation, deepen our understanding of both the achievements and challenges that lay ahead, and provide a strong framework for taking urgent action. Thank you for your attention. Thanks so much, Embla. So next, um, we have Hajime Kimura from the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, um, and also part of the ASM3 organizing committee. He's going to give us kind of a, a taste of the highlights from the actual ministerial, um, which took place in Tokyo. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Um, I'm Hajime Kimura of Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, Technology, Japan. Um, next slide, please. Today, I would like to briefly share highlights from the Arctic Science Ministerial that was held in Tokyo just a few weeks ago. I will tell you a bit more about the ministerial meeting, how we organized it, and show you some photos taken at the venue. The SM3 was originally scheduled to take place in November 2020, as the ministerial had been held by annually. But um, considering the ongoing global effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the organizing committee decided to postpone the ministerial to May 2021. Finally, we held the SM3 on 8th and 9th May in Tokyo at Toronto Hills Forum. And for the representatives who were not able to come to Japan, we provided online participation. Some countries who participated online um, also sent their embassy officials to take part in the to take part in the ministerial at the venue in Tokyo, as you can see the photo here. Okay, so next slide, please. Thank you. Here, I would like to share with you the opening shot of the minister meeting.
reminds me of the ministerial meeting. Yeah. Okay, so next slide. Um, here is the program for the first day of the ministerial. The meeting started from 7 p.m. Japan time and ended 10 p.m. Ministers of Iceland and Japan gave opening remarks as co-chairs. Each head of the delegation, HOD, was assigned to one theme session and made an intervention. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here is the program for the second day. Next slide, please. Okay, the, uh, the overarching theme of GSM3 is knowledge for a sustainable Arctic. This theme focuses on addressing the most urgent challenges facing the Arctic, which can be met through international scientific cooperation. Science Advisory Board SAB members led the ministerial meeting by explaining the SM3 science process and framing the discussion in each thematic session with key findings from their review of all the, all the science submitted by countries and organizations. Next slide, please. Thank you. For two days, the representatives of the SM3 delivered statements and participated in the general discussion. We had 32 interventions, including from four Arctic Indigenous Peoples Organizations representatives. Each head of delegation delivered a statement in one of the four sub theme sessions observe, understand, respond, and strengthen. Regardless of this allocation of each theme or HOD, and registered delegation members participated in the general discussion followed by the HOD statement. And here I would like to once to mention, as a part of the SIS delegation statement, a short movie was shown about the work of the late Connie Stefan, whom many of us know as a major force in polar research and strong supporter of international collaboration. He is very much missed, but his legacy lives on. Next slide, please. On the second day, keynote speeches were given by the coasting countries. From Japan, Dr. Shinsugiyama introduced his activity in Greenland and showed the rapid environmental change and its impact on society. He believed that talking to the next generation is an important role for scientists. He said, the climate and environment are clearly changing in the Arctic and it is clear that they are affecting life in the Arctic. So we must think about what will be our next action for a sustainable future in the Arctic. Next from Iceland, Dr. Johan Imand Larsen introduced her international collaborative and interdisciplinary work on the Arctic Youth and Sustainable Futures project. She said the future of the Arctic and our ability to land on a sustainable trajectory will be determined to a great extent by today's youth. Next slide, please. Okay, in the closing session, all 27 countries and the European Union signed the joint statement. When the joint statement was signed at the venue, all online participants signed a locally printed version of the joint statement. And at the end of the ministerial, Russia and France announced that they will co-host the fourth Arctic Science Ministerial. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the last one. Um, we believe the meeting was meaningful and we affirmed our shared commitment to international cooperation in Arctic science as an important step to take action on climate change. And we also recognize that Arctic research must necessarily include Arctic indigenous people as equal partner. And this good, I think good, and good photo represents the fact that this ministerial meeting was held both in person and online under, say, extraordinary circumstances. We really appreciate the global cooperation required to make this ministerial a success. Thank you very much, and sorry for running over a little bit time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Ajime.
Um, so I'm really pleased to introduce our next speaker, uh, Anton Vasilyev, uh, who is the former Russian ambassador to Iceland and is now deputy director of the representative office of the Russian State Hydrometeorological University. And uh, he's going to give us an update on ASM4. Anton. Are you still muted, Anton? Okay, do you hear me? Do you hear me? No? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, that's fine. So first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Iceland and uh, Japan with the wonderful work done with ISM3. Uh, secondly, I would like to say that, yes, uh, Russia uh, will be glad to take the torch from the hands of Iceland and carry it on uh, to ISM4. Uh, together with uh, one of the co-sponsors, so we are, our intention is to sustain the tradition. Uh, we are working with a potential co-sponsor, so it's too early to, to, we don't have a final, final, final uh, decision from the part of our co-sponsor, so it's too early to, to announce it yet, but it will be one of the uh, state's observers to the Arctic Council. Uh, we, uh, it is our intention to um, build on what has been done by our distinguished successors maybe bring something new, but still carry on along the lines that have been drawn by our distinguished predecessors. Uh, we shall be led by uh, the, uh, something which we cannot uh, uh, ignore now. We shall be led in our, in our thinking and organizing by the strategic plan of the Arctic Council, that the first ever 10 year plan of, of mostly scientific research and other activities. Uh, worked out within the Arctic Council. Uh, we shall be led by our own Arctic strategy, which has been renewed uh, last, year, last year. And again, we shall uh, uh, take into account all the experience accumulated during ISM 1, ISM 2, ISM 3. Uh, it is our intention to uh, work towards the goal of holding the ISM 3, uh, uh, ISM 4 meeting in 2023. So we still have some time. And uh, I understand there are many questions that, that uh, you would like to pose us, but I would uh, frankly say that it would be premature to answer any of them because we are still at the, at the phase of learning, studying, and uh, we have agreed preliminary that with this uh, uh, torch will be given to us uh, if situation permits, as COVID situation permits, uh, during the next assembly of the Arctic Circle in October in, 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 in Reykjavik. There are many ideas that we are working on and, and uh, we are thinking what would be our contribution together with all members of ISM process. One of the ideas is uh, uh, looking at the, at the prospect of organizing the national year uh, somewhere in the distant perspective but it will be a huge understanding if, if, if ever if ever done huge undertaking uh, based on the uh, experience of the previous international poll year but the preparation to that would need many many years so maybe maybe we will of course consult within ourselves with the, our our, our some partners and maybe come to this conclusion. There are many other uh, other ideas, and again, I would like to say it would be premature to 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 talk um, uh, to talk about them no, uh, now. Uh, one final point is that we would like to work very uh, in very close contact with Iceland, with Japan, with other chairs of of ISM process, uh, either in uh, some organization together in one organization organization committee or in close contact uh, with each other on a personal. Profession, professional level just uh, in order to help us move move on move forward and uh, of course of course uh, we we have been uh, looking very closely to uh, to the, the very elegant way that uh, Japan and Iceland Iceland and Japan have managed to overcome the difficulties uh, huge difficulties because of the COVID, COVID pan pandemics and again I commend your, your, your success 
and I, I will pray God that we shall during uh, Russian uh, leadership of ISM, ISM of ISM process, we shall get rid with COVID, and there will be no COVID-like uh, troubles face, facing us to overcome. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good uh, uh, meeting. We shall be reading very carefully the final outcome of uh, your today's meeting and the declaration of ISM4. This will be one of our leading, leading documents in our thinking. And uh, I'm really very sorry I'll have to leave the meeting uh, in a matter of one, one moment. And thank you very much for inviting me. And I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. And certainly I know I speak on behalf of all of the ASM3 organizers. Um, that we will do our utmost to support your planning for the next ASM and we look forward to um, collaborating together. So thank you very much. All right, so we're sort of moving on now in our program to kind of review um, the key outcomes from this ASM3 process. And I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, Ausfeder Kertensrotter, um, who is my colleague here at the Ministry of Education, Science and Culture in Iceland. So take it away, Ausgeber. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you, Anton, again for the warm words. Uh, in this final, uh, the, the last part of the webinar, we will present the final outcomes of the ASM3 process, namely the final report, the joint statement, and the online resources. Next slide. Following the successful third Arctic Science Ministerial, the ASM report is out and now publicly available. The aim of the report was to develop a complete overview of the entire ASM3 science process. The report includes contributions from countries and organizations, as well as outcomes from the workshops which took place as part of the ASM3 process. I will briefly introduce each chapter of the report. The science summary is, a, is comprised of theme-based science submitted through the formal process for ASM3 by countries, indigenous peoples, organizations, and international science and education organizations. Uh, Jenny Baseman, our uh, science consultant, will cover the science summary in greater uh, detail later on. Next one. Uh, it was important for us to include in the report the joint statement, which was signed by, the by all 27 countries and the European Commission at the Ministerial in May. We do not underestimate the importance of the consensus and willingness to work together among so many countries who have agreed to cooperate in Arctic science. Next one. Each webinar in this uh, series, uh, yeah, each webinar in this series is recorded and can be found on the European Polar Board's uh, YouTube channel. We wanted to include a record of this series for future organizers uh, to work from and expand this concept because the feedback from the series was instrumental to the success of ASM3. Next slide, please. So I, I'm a little bit be, before, yeah. And, and the moving forward chapter we introduced, uh, it's a new, it's an addition to the previous ASM3 reports and includes key recommendations from the ASM3 uh, science advisory report. These recommendations are for everyone engaged in Arctic science, looking to close gaps and to remove barriers to research. And in the final section of the report, there is also a detailed list of acronyms, as well as appendix, which includes summaries from the relevant meetings that were mentioned before, which play, took place leading up to the ASM, including the ISAR-6, Arctic Observing Summit, and the ASM community workshops. But I will now put you in the capable hands of Jenny Baseman, our science consultant, who will uh, dive deeper into the science summary. Jenny, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I just wanna start out by thanking all of the countries and organizations that participated in this. Um, 
and especially those of you behind the scenes who take the time to put together all the information that was submitted. Um, just going through that, we know how much work and time goes into that and we very much appreciate all of your efforts. Um, as Embla mentioned earlier, um, there were 434 science projects submitted. And when pulling together this information, um, I was fortunate enough to have been involved with Volker Rachold and Karin Lotter in the organization of the science part for ASM2. So we had a little bit of a, of a head start on how we could help to improve um, the science that was going into ASM3. We followed a similar procedure in which countries would submit information. But the step forward here was that we created standardized forms, um, as Embla mentioned, and we're able to extract that data and information to do a lot of, of fun things in organizing and grouping projects into different categories. And that was um, helped very much by the Science Advisory Board, who then could go through different topics and help to pick out projects that we wanted to highlight um, in, in the science summary. So you can imagine that of the 434 projects, fitting that into 30 pages can be a bit challenging. So we did our best and hope that you will use the, the new resource of the ASM3 Science Projects database to find out more about the projects that are, that are briefly mentioned in the summary. You will also find a section which is new called the ASM3 in Numbers. Um, here we have a, a word cloud, um, which uh, the, the size of the word is represented by the number of times that keyword was selected as being important in the project. Um, there's a lot more information that we will we'll dig into with statistics and hopefully in the near future and you may you may see um, some publications on on all the great work that's been done and some of the the, the fun um, things we can still pull out of, of the numbers that were uh, submitted. So in addition, um, there were the Arctic research overviews, which each country and organization submitted, and these were updated from the ASM 1 and 2. Um, these are very important because they give a nice quick glance at what the countries are doing. Um, they're organized to showcase or to highlight um, the research policy and goals. Um, the funders and institutions involved in Arctic research in the countries, as well as um, research and education and capacity building initiatives and the infrastructure that our country might have. So if you're interested in what some country or organization is working on, check out these great research overviews. And again, new to this um, ASM was a section called Moving Forward. Um, as we were going through all of the materials that were submitted, not just the project updates, but also the, the surveys that were sent out and the input from different organizations and communities, we found these um, overarching messages that were coming from the community as well as the funders and stakeholders on different things that really should be done to help um, move international research a few steps forward. Um, they're divided into various categories, um, observing, uh, which also includes the, the call to action submitted by the Arctic Observing Summit, um, uh, research planning activities that could go on, education and outreach was very important to this particular ASM, um, so we encourage you to look at all of that. Um, the Indigenous capacity building um, kept coming through very strongly and is something that we, we all know we need to um, strive to, to do a little bit better on. And I think some of the recommendations that came out um, in this section um, are, are, would be very helpful in that um, activity. Also um, suggestions on how to increase uh, international efforts and some potential next steps. So we would like to encourage um, those of you who have access to um, creating research policies and funding opportunities in your countries and organizations to take a step at this or take a look at this next steps guide and, and potentially um, see if there isn't something you can do to help with these recommendations that came forward. So with that, I will turn it back to our fearless leader, uh, Lindsay. Great. Thanks so much, Jenny. Um, and we've also just shared the full link to the report, which is on the ASN3 website, just in the chat box. Um, so moving on now to the joint statement, we can go to the next, there we go. Um, so there's a reason, you know, that we wanted to introduce this whole science process before discussing the joint statement, because um, we really see the science as kind of the foundation for what we wanted represented in the joint statement. Um, so this is just kind of a brief 
overview of the joint statement process. And uh, although it's somewhat confidential um, of a process between the signatories, we just wanted to review the process because um, we think that improves kind of understanding on how we got from A to Z, um, from you know the science requested to the, the ministerial. And that also just helps demystify this whole process for the wider community, as well as for future organizers. So let's go on to the next one. So we're really pleased to share that the joint statement of ministers was signed by all 27 countries and the European Union. Um, and as my colleague said earlier, we don't underestimate the importance of reaching such a strong consensus, especially with so many countries involved. So this is kind of the basic schedule that we worked with um, for drafting the joint statement. And although a basic framework for the joint statement was developed earlier in 2020, we wanted to make sure that we had completed our science process so that the actions identified in the joint statement were well-founded in the science. And we had strong conclusions to put forward for the countries to consider for their joint actions. So as with the second Arctic Science Ministerial, um, the drafting process was open to the participating countries as well as to the six Arctic Indigenous Peoples Organizations, who are also known as the permanent participants in the Arctic Council context. Um, the ASM3 joint statement made some really meaningful strides to highlight that the equal inclusion of Indigenous knowledge in the Arctic research framework is critical for ensuring that we have the strongest, <laughs> strongest evidence-based research um, to inform holistic decisions. All right, next slide. Um, so what we did with the joint statement, you know, the actions that are presented are based on the findings from the entire ASM3 science process, and they're presented in each of the four themes. We also identified a group of cross-cutting actions, which are relevant across the themes, and so those are identified um, in a separate section at the end of the joint statement. Um, what's also new to this joint statement is we, we broke the actions into long-term and near-term goals. So identifying some actions that are really ripe for immediate cooperation, um, and then some that are potentially more relevant um, that could be developed for collaboration in future Arctic science ministerials. And this is just part of that process of trying to institutionalize um, the process of the ASN and help to kind of build connectivity from one to the next. And, you know, really, as we kind of covered earlier, we see the ASM3 report as a key resource for diving into the actions that are identified in the joint statement. Um, as with all joint statements, these are pretty high level documents. Um, and so the report is a way to kind of dig deeper um, into those actions and look into the background and then find maybe some more relevant steps that can be taken. Um, forward. So as Jenny mentioned, that moving forward section of the report has some really good recommendations for how to dig deeper on the action identified in the joint statement. So you can find all of this on the ASM3 website. Um, and with that, we will move on to our next speaker, which is Tetsuo Suyoshi from the National Institute of Polar Research and also a member of the ASM3 um, organizing committee. Thank you, Lindsay. <clears throat> Thanks for introduction. So I will introduce some additional resources um, produced by the ASM3 process and made available online now and which we believe is uh, very useful for future collaboration among the countries and the groups of the researchers. So as I mean, as I included in the, the title, so let me start from the, um, the project database, which we, we believe the um, one of our major uh, product or outcomes. So, I mean, you saw some statistics already about the project informations from the countries and those uh, informations I mean, can be simply searched from this um, database. I mean, from the, I'm mean, using the keywords, location, countries, and both uh, by the so list view or map view. I mean, I'm quickly shown here. I mean, right-hand side is the list view and in the middle part is the map view. I mean, showing, I mean, with this kind of some colors are showing which project is, I mean, doing which area in the Arctic. And now you can find this uh, website, uh, 
uh, from the, the you can find a link from the uh, SMS website and the you can find the user manual from there so you can um, uh, easily understand how to navigate those data. Could you go to the next slide please? And uh, here's the people who worked behind this database. So, I mean, Jenny mentioned already about the, um, those data used for the science summary, but the, actually the, the idea of the database was from the ASM2 time. Unfortunately, at that time, it was not possible to, to realize as this kind of um, database, on, I mean, online database. But now um, together, worked together with the Arctic Data Archive System people, so who were in National Institute of Polar Research in Japan. So those three people really worked hard to implement this system on the, on, as an online database and also did very careful check about that all submitted data together with Jenny. And so now finally on, the, on our website, you can find all these available data. And so the one big advantage of such database is the, we can update those information. So if there is, I mean, some errors, of course, we can correct it later. And also, of course, the, our expectation is the addition of new data from the future uh, SM or, I mean, other this type of survey. Yeah, so could you go to the next slide, please? And also we are doing update on our SM3 website. So this is the, our website we used for for during last one or more years, one, one almost two years now, and the now this this information is about the preparing. Uh, I mean, the information was to prepare for the our SM3 meeting in in May. I mean, which has happened last month. Um, next slide, please. And now we move this information for the documentation type of information, and we will include all key documents like we already announced this um, science summary and joint statement and all this, this type of the important documents and together with the photo gallery. I mean, some of the pictures are already um, shown by Hajime already during this webinar, but I mean, together with other pictures. And also we will show some uh, video recordings from the science advisory board members. I mean, the science process uh, introduction and also the theme overviews. And, and also the keynote presentations. I mean, those two speeches are really uh, good ones and we really hope everybody can, can look at these presentations. And of course, this uh, webinar series archive is, I mean, already there on the website, but I mean, um, keep, uh, I mean, we, we keep this website up there. And so we add some uh, more online resources to the website. Next slide, please. So we are now working hard to, to um, add these items on our website. So the, the result from the International Collaboration and Cooperation Opportunity Survey and, and other two items were listed here on, the, on this slide. But all of these items will be there, I mean, soon. So now the big updates on the website is going on. So we hope um, all of you uh, will check the website again and to see all of these outcomes on our website. Thank you. That's all for me. Thanks so much, Tetsuo. And yeah, as you can see, um, you know, we're, we're working hard to make sure that all of the input, scientific input that was given into the ASM process that we're able to share all of those resources because you know we believe that really helps kind of the formation of future ASMs that we're able to to see what was submitted um, and and what that resulted in and, and what kind of the the key findings from that are. So we'll continue to update the ASM3 website to make sure that all of those resources are accessible and easily findable. Um, okay, our last speaker is Runuka Badi from the European Polar Board. And uh, before she starts, I'll just embarrass all of our um, co-organizers at the European Polar Board and just say that this webinar series would not have been possible without their kind cooperation. And they've been excellent partners in this process. Um, and we were just so pleased uh, that this came together as a result really of the pandemic. Um, 
And this was a huge uh, win for us in terms of the final outcomes of the ASM3. So we're so grateful to all of you at the European Polar Board for making this webinar series happen. So now that I've embarrassed you, take it away, Renuka. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, I'm sure I can return the favor, just wait for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that introduction. And it just, um, we, uh, we have basically reached the final talk of this final webinar of the ASM3 webinar series. And it is really my absolute pleasure to give you, give you all some highlights of, of the webinar series itself. Um, my name is Renu Kabade and I'm the executive secretary of the European Polar Board. The EPB is an independent organization that focuses on major European strategic priorities in both Arctic and Antarctic regions. And we have quite a wide variety of members uh, that include research institutes, funding agencies, scientific academies, and polar operators that work uh, at both polar regions from across Europe. We currently have 28 member organizations in 20 countries, and our secretariat is based in the Netherlands. If you'd like more information about the EPB, my colleague will just copy a link to our website where you can find some more information about us. So this series, as we've, um, as we've heard quite a few times, was planned as a part of a community engagement process in response to the disruption to travel um, that happened due to the COVID-19 crisis. And it has also been our pleasure to cooperate with the ASN3 organizers to set up this series. Uh, it's, been, it's been wonderful to be able to uh, participate and, and uh, provide support for such an such an amazing initiative uh, that uh, that brought about a lot of community engagement. So we organized eight webinars in total over nine months. We started in October 2020, and this, as I said, is the final webinar of the series. Um, and we've we've organized this with in cooperation with the ASM3 organizers, but we have also now made it, uh, made, made sure that the legacy of this process is going to be carried forward by ensuring that both the videos, uh, video recordings of these webinars and also the transcripts are also uh, are made available well beyond the process. So they're available on the YouTube, uh, EPB YouTube channel. Uh, for you to access and the link is given on that slide. So from the EPB side, we provided um, the webinar platform, technical and organizational support, and also the legacy uh, planning, like I just said, next slide, please. So there were eight webinars. Uh, four of these were based on the four themes of the ASM, uh, ASM which was strengthen, respond, understand, and observe. And additionally, this series also had cross-cutting webinars. For example, the addressing gaps and barriers in international, uh, international Arctic science research, and also the very well-received indigenous people's participation in the ASM3 process. Uh, we had very high numbers that attended these two webinars. Within the community also, Apart from this official ASM3 series, there were also quite a few webinars that were held within the community. For example, the EPB, we also held a European Perspectives on the ASM3 webinar. Um, next slide, please. So within this series, and I'm particularly glad to present this slide, we had more than 70 speakers from 17 different countries. And we had an amazing gender diversity, as you can see in the speakers. Um, this is, let me tell you, this is quite rare. So I congratulate the organizers on achieving a good, good diversity in this case. Next slide, please. Uh, we obviously had an amazing, fantastic response from all of you, the attendees to this ASM3 webinar series. We had more than a thousand people attending all of these webinars, um, including this webinar that, that we are part of right now. We actually had more than a 1,500 registrations in total from 46 countries in the world. Next slide, please. 
So we see a little bit more of a analysis. I am a scientist, so <laughs> you get to see a few graphs. Uh, we see that the attendees in the various webinars in the beginning were very, very high. Now, it, it also became a little bit less with time. So one of the reasons that the first few webinars uh, were cross-cutting, so they might have, uh, they might have uh, gotten a lot more interest from many people. And the final few webinars were themed webinars. So that's why they might have been of interest to very specific people with that speciality. We may have also observed a little bit of webinar fatigue uh, going towards the end of that series. Um, so this is easily corrected by ensuring that our recordings are available on YouTube and our transcripts are available. And we are taking all of these steps to ensure that this uh, goes on. So as you can see, even with the green line, you can see these are the YouTube views of the different videos per month um, since they have been uploaded. So you can see that there's been a constant few people checking in almost every month regularly uh, over the time since they've been uploaded. Next slide, please. So it is my pleasure to introduce the EPB team. Um, it's not just me, but it's also my colleagues, uh, Joseph Nolan and Peter Elshut who have provided the technical and, and organizational support to this uh, APB webinar, uh, to this ASM3 webinar series. Next slide, please. So just a little bit at the end from a few recommendations and some lessons learned from organizing this. The webinar series was very well received overall. We have also received a lot of positive feedback and we've definitely heard good things about having uh, an interactive format, uh, or having, having uh, this kind of series that provides accessibility. Um, we definitely learned that having an interactive format within a webinar, it keeps the audience a lot better involved. Then we also, uh, learned that having translations, for example, uh, ensuring that we cover different time zones, we cover uh, the possibility that people can call in instead of seeing things on the internet. All of these increase the accessibility of these webinars. We also really need to ensure that the uh, diversity of speakers is present. And it's not just gender diversity, but we have diversity through disciplines different career stages, geographies, different places of the world, uh, and also gender. And if people see, if people see a lot of this diversity again, the acceptance rate of the webinars increases quite dramatically. And last but not the least, expect the unexpected. Uh, definitely, we've had to have several backup plans, not just one or two. And also people that are ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, in fact, we had some individuals who had to drop out due to hospital visits. Someone had no internet. Um, we were at the secretariat. Uh, we were also affected by a large hack that took place in our host organization. So we had no access to any IT systems. So we had to really make things work on a run. <laughs> but I just wanted to also organize that I think everyone has underlined, all the speakers before me have underlined that the importance of such a such a webinar series. And I, I, I'll just like to say that we offer our full support to the next ASM organizers uh, for such an endeavor. Thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please. And to close my talk, um, it's my turn to embarrass Lindsay now. Uh, I'd like to really express my thanks, not just to my APB colleagues, but also to all of my colleagues from Iceland, and Japan that were part of the organizing committee for this webinar series. It's been a pleasure to, to, um, to work on this with you all. Um, thanks is of course due to all of the speakers that have joined us in the series um, with really fantastic enthusiasm. Um, and finally, the webinar series would not have been successful without you all, our audience. So I thank you all for attending and actively participating in this and making the series such a fantastic success. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Raduka. Yeah, it's really wonderful um, to kind of see 
you know, what happened during this whole series. I think we received a lot of positive feedback, but to kind of see those numbers and see how um, widely it was received and attended is really encouraging. And it shows how important it is uh, to share all of this research with the wider community in a way that's um, accessible. And, you know, I really think to um, our science advisory board and Jenny Baseman um, for being so willing to continually <laughs> organize um, each webinar and, and make one of each a success. We had science advisory board members in um, each of the webinars helping to give overviews and guide the discussion and all of that um, wonderfully organized in the background by Jenny. So thank you very much um, to our science advisory board and to Jenny for playing that part. So we just have two minutes in our time left. Um, we haven't received any questions in the question box. Um, if there's anything, you, you can type it in now, um, but we will hopefully end this on time. And again, just wanna say, you know, thank you especially to um, the audience who continue to engage in this series. Um, we hope something like this goes forward in future ASMs. Because again, this was just a big learning for us, how important it is to share it um, with everyone. And especially uh, to get a lot of the project leads from the science projects that were submitted through this process. It's wonderful to be able to connect the scientists to these kind of bigger orchestrations happening, you know, all the way down to the report and then to the joint statement. And to give an opportunity for um, ministers and those who work in the ministries um, to connect to the science leads as well. This is kind of all part of the bigger plan um, that we're trying to implement here for the Arctic Science Ministerial. So thank you to all of you who have been part of that. So with that, um, I don't see any questions here. So uh, we can end. I'm sort of sad to end as we've had so many <laughs> of these wonderful webinars. Um, so yeah, just again, thank you to all and um, thanks for being part of this process. All right. And you can still use this website address if you would like to get in touch with the ASM3 organizing committee. Um, I don't think that there's a formal contact process yet for the next organizers, um, but you're free to get in touch with us or if you want to connect um, to the future organizers, you can, you can reach out to us. All right. Thank you all. Great.